Greetings and welcome to another how-to video from EK. My name is Matiz and today I'll show you everything you need to know about water cooling the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX graphics card with our water block. From the GPU disassembly to the step-by-step -step installation of the RX 7900 XTX water block. The video is timestamped so you can skip right to the part that interests you the most. And if you're looking for more similar content and information about cool new products, subscribe to our YouTube channel and newsletter and follow us on social media. Also, be sure to visit our web shop to find just the right liquid cooling gear for your build. All the links are available in the description below. This beauty right here is the Radeon RX 7900 XTX water block. Not only does it look stunning, but it also provides high-performance cooling for the graphics compute die, the voltage regulation module, voltage controllers, VRAM and the MCDs on this fantastic GPU. Compared to other Vector2 water blocks, this cooling engine has been rotated by 90 degrees, so the fins are perpendicular to the die. For optimal delta, the coolant flows over the graphics core die first and the memory cache die after, so all the MCDs get the same temperature coolant. The water block is also available in the acetal version. And we also have something very special for you. This is the EK Quantum Vector 2 RX7900 XTX AMD Radeon Edition, a limited quantities water block made to celebrate the launch of the latest GPU based on the AMD RDNA 3 architecture. Both water blocks fit reference PCB designs of the Radeon RX7900 XTX GPUs. Also available are the versions that fit the ASUS TUF and PowerColor Red Devil. For precise compatibility information about these water blocks, we recommend you refer to the EK Cooling Configurator. This installation also applies to the Radeon Edition water block. Now let's dig in. Wow, would you look at this graph? It's telling us you're not subscribed. Hit that button. Be cool. First, we'll unplug these two cables on the bottom side. Try not to pull on the cables themselves, but use a small flat screwdriver to gently wiggle each side of the plug. Believe it or not, this was the hardest part of the whole process. Now let's unscrew the back plate of the GPU by removing these five screws. And there we go! Now before we get the PCB out, we should remove these three screws on the I.O. bracket. So far, so good. And quite easy. We will now remove all 15 screws on the PCB while leaving the last four on the clamp to be removed last. Luckily, all 15 screws are the same, so it will be easy to assemble the cooler back together. Now for the last four screws on the clamp, we'll first unscrew them halfway. Then we'll slowly unscrew one of them and while doing that, we should hold the clamp so the screw doesn't get lost due to tension. Now we can safely remove the last three. And we're almost there. We'll now wiggle and lift the PCB, slowly alternating the sides. And there we go. That wasn't too difficult. We recommend assembling the cooler back and safely storing it again, if you ever need it. What's left is cleaning up the die for the new thermal paste, and with the GPU ready, we are good to go with blocking this bad boy with some EK goodness. Step 1. We should first unscrew the 6 screws on the back plate without removing them. Your block will arrive with a dummy cardboard PCB in between the back plate and the block. So be sure to remove it. Once you've removed the back plate, make sure you scan the QR code to see the installation manual. Step 2. The GPU water block comes with thermal pads that have to be cut into smaller pieces to cover all the necessary components, 
such as the VRM, the VRAM and the die. So let's just cut thermal pads accordingly. Step 3. Once cut to size, thermal pads should be placed on the PCB as shown in the installation manual. And do not forget to peel both sides of the thermal pads. The end result should look something like this. Step 4. Apply and close thermal paste on the GPU die. And remember, do it in a cross pattern. Step 5. First, pick up the box and put the block on top of it. Now, carefully position the PCB onto the water block with pre installed standoffs. During this process, align the mounting holes of the PCB with the holes on the water block. Step 6. From the mounting kit, use the 10 mounting screws and PVC washers to tighten the PCB onto the block. The mounting screws are the shorter screws in the package. Tighten the screws evenly using the Phillips head screwdriver. To prevent GPU damage, we recommend tightening the screws around the GPU core first and then continuing outward. Tighten the screws around the GPU die in a cross pattern. Go halfway first, align the whole PCB and then tighten them. Step 7. With the water block attached, a few more thermal pads need to be cut into smaller pieces to put them on the back plate. Step 8. Fill the thermal pads and apply them to the back plate as shown in the installation manual. In the end, it should look something like this. Step 9. The final step is to position the back plate, including the screws and standoffs, onto the GPU's PCB. Once all the holes are aligned, you can tighten the screws evenly. Half a turn here, half a turn here, two turns here, three turns here. And there we go! The EK Quantum Vector 2 RX7900 XTX water block is now ready to lift the performance of this GPU to new heights. That's it for today. I hope we managed to bring the 7900 XTX water block installation process closer to you and show how easy it is. Feel free to contact our customer support anytime you have questions or need help with our products. Like, comment, share and subscribe if you dig this video. And be sure to dig through our YouTube channel for more useful water cooling videos. Until next time, stay cool!